so those two weeks in Spain were incredible, really. It was yeah, really? really fun. Yeah, actually. And what about you? Did you manage to finish oh, what uh, you had to do for the demo? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are refactoring all of the exception tests. And uh, we get rid of all the JSON file, and we replace it with a kind of ASCII art to represent uh, the theater. And really? Yeah, it's very pragmatic. ASCII art instead of JSON? Yeah, I like yeah it. have a look. Okay. Let me check. Yeah. Um, should uh, suggestion seed service should. Yeah. All right. What do you think? Oh, pretty awesome. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me. Yeah. <laughs> What do we have? Okay, so this is the test for Denver Theater. Yeah. Okay, we have a representation, a visual representation of the of the theater yeah. here. Okay. Maybe for for can you show me uh, a seat and explain what is it? Oh, easy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this should be A9. Absolutely. Okay, and this should be E8, right? Cool. Okay. Uh, I guess this is the front row, the uh, where the stage here yeah. is. Okay, uh, w w what would we have some numbers like this? Uh, you forget doing your holiday. Uh, it's a category, it's, a, it's the affinity of the price. Uh, ah, pricing category? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. okay, so that means that in the front row, there are, uh, the first pricing category is the most expensive one. Yeah. Here, also here, okay. Yeah. And second pricing category is here, and third in one. In the back is back the, of the yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and what about those parentheses? Uh -huh, like think about uh, Oh, easy. It should be the seats that are already booked. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, cool. OK, so here we have a theater. Yeah. We don't have a request anymore. What is party? Yeah, yeah. party is a group of people asking for a suggestion of seat. OK, you have a number of people that yeah. want to find seats. Yeah. And the category they want. In this case, uh, we don't care about the category. Okay. Okay, it's all or first or second or third. Okay. 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 Oh, wait a minute. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah. everything is, is done. Yeah. Uh, we receive a message from the PO. The new PO? Yeah, yeah the new PO. Have a look. Let me check. Um, oh. Uh, the Paul Rayner? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You missed something, guys. Uh huh. There are corridors in theaters. Okay. Yeah. For instance, given the theater, I guess the corridors are the stuff yeah. in green. Yeah. When you are asked for a party of eight people, you should propose the following places. All right. Uh, so that the group is only split in two groups of adjacent seats. Yeah. Uh, let me check with the real test. Yeah. So we have a corridor after the two. Yeah, first. it's kind of a new boundary be between seats. Okay. Uh, let's let's put it yeah. something like that. Double pipes. Yeah. Okay, we'll follow his uh, guideline. Yeah. Okay, like this. But now okay. we, we can consider the, the ah. yeah. So far, the seed suggestion service will provide it from A6 to A9, meaning from this one uh, to this one. It doesn't work because you have a binary now. Ah, and because we need to find adjacent seats. Yeah. There is a policy when, when you ask for more six seat. More than six seats? Yeah, you have to split in two parts. So here we are eight, two parts of four seats, yeah. but adjacent. Adjacent, yeah. Okay, that means that reason why we should not provide this uh, highlighted, uh, but instead let's... C3, C4, C5, and C6. Okay, let's, let's do it. So it will break our test. Yeah. We'll break our test. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's let's fix that. Yeah. Uh, mm, 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 mm. So we instantiate a party and we ask the suggestion seat service. Yeah. Please suggest me the best seats mm -hmm. for an event ID, etc. Okay. Let's look. Go into details. First thing is to ask to the theater provider yeah. the adapter. Uh, yeah, we have an event ID and we retrieve the theater event. In that case, within our acceptance test, it's a stub. Uh, it's a stub. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's not okay. a reality. Yeah. Uh, then we have a we instantiate a suggestion provider and we ask it to uh, make suggestion for that party. Yeah. All right. All right, all right, all right. Uh, okay. So uh, I can't remember what seat uh, allocation seat is. allocation is a kind of a buffer to store seat we suggest. 
okay, you, you are uh, finding seats, yeah. and, and at, at the end of the day, you will return uh, a suggestion yeah. built from the seat allocation buffer. Absolutely. Okay, let me check. If the seat allocation is fulfilled, uh, I return a new suggestion here, and otherwise, I suggest a suggestion failure data yeah. structure. Okay, 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 makes sense. So here, okay, we, we we have to find the best available seats when possible yeah. into adjacent group. And if we can't find it at the end of the row, yeah. uh, we, we start with a kind of fallback uh, without uh, the constraints to have a seat adjacent. So this district. So we yeah. will split more yeah. the adjacent seat groups. Yeah, absolutely. OK, OK. Uh, OK, let's what do we have. OK, so here we have a uh, suggestion provider. Yeah. Uh, yes, since we split into multiple parties. As I said, this is a rule, we split the parties. Okay, now we have to find best seats for every party. Mm. Okay, so uh, for every party, find best seats. Okay, that makes sense. <sighs> okay, uh, for every row. Okay, this is, uh, we are in a suggestion seat. Yeah, provider. the algorithm is based on row. And uh, we look on each row if we find a set of uh, adjacent, adjacent seats. Seat, find best seats. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's zoom. I hope this is the end. Oh, uh, how many calls do we have? Uh, okay, find best seats. So here we are on a row class. Yeah. Okay, and we ask a row, please find me the best seats. First thing is to find ranges of available seats for a category. Yeah, okay. ranges is a kind of group of uh, seat adjacent. Okay, let me check. Here, okay. Oh, that means that first we filter seats by their pricing category. Yeah. But also by the fact that if they are available or not, yeah. like this, and if the category is compliant. Compatible, okay, that, okay. Uh, what, what range is? Uh, I never heard the, the yes, expert talking about that. Yes, it's a group of adjacent seats. Uh. A group, uh, uh, a group yeah. of adjacent seats yeah. we, 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 we have the row, we look for inside if it fit uh, the request, uh, and we return a range. The range is actually the, the group of uh, adjacent seats. Okay, so let me rename it. If uh, yes, for you. it's not so Group of meaningful. adjacent uh, seats uh, for a category. No, no, because the category is already filtered before. Uh, in, the, in this ah. uh, stuff, there is no so affinity what? with the category. No, so group of adjacent seats. Yeah, it's better. Okay. Uh, extract, did you heard the domain expert no, talking about that? No, maybe fine, it will be better. Yeah, he was saying find some adjacent seats. Yeah. Okay, fine. Makes sense. Okay, so we need to uh, to enter the uh, this stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what we need basically is to take corridors into account. Yeah. When it will the time to uh, yeah to find adjacent seats, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Makes sense. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. We're supposed to have a ring here, but. The text switch. <laughs> Why is it dark like this? It doesn't make sense. Blue is the color. It's okay. Ah, uh, okay, better. Check. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Uh, test. That. <coughs> if I take this seat off the track, uh, should I be red? Ah. What? No the covering test. The, the of What's it about? Did you update uh, and crunch? 
Yeah, it seems not working. Uh, does not detect the test. I made a mistake. No, go on. We should have, have picked that tool. It's almost broken, almost broken. Test attribute what? Yeah, it's a test. Ah, uh, we need to put test. All right. Okay. Okay. Why not? Uh, what should I take that test it? Get reserve. Get reserve. Get reserve. People. We split into groups and sit together. <coughs> A mail. You missed something, guys. <laughs> I bet you. There are corridors in Seattle. What? Not for the demo. Mm -hmm, not for the demo. You are asked for a party of eight people. Uh, Bruno, the demo is for tomorrow, right? Bruno, the demo is for tomorrow? Or? Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Apparently, the new Zpro Reiner <laughs> product owner decided to add a new feature just uh, yeah. the day before. Not possible. I told you by phone. Yeah. Call you. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So we are supposed to change everything the day before the demo. I suppose. Uh, suppose. Um, yeah. I don't. I, I don't know. Mate, uh, suggestion service should. Well, I was trying to do a new test. We'll have to ignore it for. Yeah. for okay. We can't do anything we want. Suggest the best. Okay, let's let's. Um, <laughs> no, I'll actually I will change everything. Control Z, Control Z. They should be green. Okay, it's green. Uh, no, it's. Um, I'm here. You open too many solutions. You should uh, avoid to do that. Right. Okay, so um, should the test should. Okay, I have to ignore. Again and again. Uh, to be completed. Right so, okay, uh, what the corridor is about? It's uh, like two pipes? It's, it's a boundary between two. Boundary between switch. <laughs> ah. Uh, shift alt what? Two. What are you talking about? Shift alt? Yeah, shift alt. Okay, shift alt. Yeah. No, no, I got the keyboard, please. Let me, give me the explanation. What should I do? Shift, Alt. And move uh, with the arrow. Move with the arrow. Yeah. Okay. And try what? again. Try again what? Shift, Shift Alt, alt with and with the arrow. Okay, you see? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, what? No, the test is broken. All our tests are broken? Yeah. The given key Z was not, no, 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 I can't see it. The given key Z was not present in the dictionary? Mm. Okay, and what about the other test? Okay, values different from, okay, we can't find any seat anymore since we introduced that. 
Yeah, try to have a look in the card. Uh, I, I suppose there is a, a shift alt what? Shift alt what? Yeah. Oh, arrow. Okay. Green. Yeah. Huh. Okay. And how is it possible? We we introduce two pipes into this. ASCII art stuff, uh, is break everything in the... Uh, I article? imagine there is a kind of state, uh, share state... I bet you, yeah. <laughs> state everywhere, okay. Guess best seats. Get result, all right. Uh, then what we have, uh, let me full screen. It's, uh, people, be hey, what's, what, what this? What, what? You underscore uh, stuff, uh, like, right? Yes, uh, we don't care. It's not a problem. You don't care? <laughs> you really don't care? I, we have a bug. Uh, we, we have but to find it. All the private fields are underscore something? It's a code style. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, you have, oh my gosh, two weeks out. You have to put this so that it's. It's a private field, man. It's an instance stuff. Uh, you have to put this oh, everywhere. Did you work alone on that, or should be uh, fixed? Uh, honestly, the compiler don't care about that. Uh, we need to uh, fix it. Uh, am I a compiler? I don't say no, no. that. Uh, code is for people. It's not for compilers. So uh, we have to put this. Otherwise, mm, I don't know how to explain it. It's been so many times we, we discussed about that. Um, this indicates that it's an instance private field, OK? Yeah. If you don't put that, we have to have an overview like this and to see stuff like that. Uh, we won't have time to do so. I agree with that, but honestly, we have a demo tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, but listen, if I take uh, something like that, oh, oh, this keyboard, a switch, is it? Oh, what? Pretty lame machine. So if we do like this, if I make this, I can see every private field and then uh, intelligence, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I know that. But you know that, okay. Good to know. Tomorrow we have a demo. A demo. And how yeah. we explain we have why we, we are in late actually, because we spend our time to fix We are not late, it's working. It was working just, just after the, the, the corridor must be implemented. No, 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 it's, uh, it's not for tomorrow. I, 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 can't, I don't think it will be possible to, to implement it for tomorrow, really. Too many exchanges to, to make. Uh, this is red. Uh, now we need to, oh, again, again and again. Uh, things everywhere. No, no, Bruno, it's not. We, we have to fix that. We have to fix that. It's really important. There is no bug. It's a new feature. It's not a bug. So we won't touch this with it. Okay. Oops. Hello, everyone. Hello. We are very happy to be here with you. Yeah, it's the second time for us in uh, this conference. Uh, as you may have guessed, we will talk about something that we practice a lot and we like a lot, which is pair programming. Maybe we will start with one question. Who in the room is already experienced pair programming at work? Cool. Cool. Who continue to experience it? Okay, cool, uh, interesting. Uh, with Bruno, we think it's a very powerful technique. It's key. It's uh, key. As, uh, as Jessica was saying yesterday, we need to align our kind of mental model, and it's a po very powerful way to, to achieve it. But it may be challenging sometimes, uh, so we'll try to... Our objective here for today is to make some tiny scenes as a pretext, as an opportunity to have a discussion with you, to have in interaction, and to have your feedbacks about what you just so, and what can be changed, stuff like that. Uh, but first thing first, we have a, yeah. a book to, to offer, which is a kind of reference. Yeah, this one is quite old, but it's still uh, very valuable. Uh, it's a better book about pair programming. So it's not like a JavaScript framework. It's, it's not deprecated uh, the next week. It's really uh, it's been more than 10 years or 15 oh, years. Very, oh, very long time ago. Very interesting. Um, so what about what we just saw? Do you have any feedbacks? The two scenes where yeah, we are yeah. playing two about the first group, yeah. about the first group or the second group. You have some. What do you see? Don't be shy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, clearly, there was a great communication in the first group. 
Yeah. And, and, and mutual respect. Yeah. Which was absent. Oh, absent, absent. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry, the, the question is, in, uh, the observation uh, was, in the first group, we can see some uh, communications and mutual respect somehow, uh, whereas in the second group, I was kind of bullying Bruno, actually. Yeah, that's right. Uh, in terms of communication, that's, uh, that's the first uh, thing. What about the uh, workspace layout? What about our position regarding the keyboard, the, the mouse, the screen? Did you observe some stuff? In the first group, was kind of, yeah. Uh, your body language was very different. Uh, in the first time, you were open to each other. And the second time, you were both very hunched in and isolated. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, in particular, did you see, in terms of body language, did you see some kind of eye contact between me and Bruno? in the second group? Not really, actually, yeah, the first... Only one at the end. <laughs> at the end, only to blame him. Say, come on, we discuss it. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> yeah, so we kind of disconnected. Whereas in the first group, it was less, uh, less uh, yeah, important. Uh, maybe, maybe we can continue with another scene. We'll get back to the um, first group. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they work uh, a little. They implement uh, the corridor, I think. Yeah. And maybe in the process, I change something. I, I will need to. Oh, sorry, Bruno. Uh, I, I just made a mistake here. I think. Um, let me. Oops. Ah, the color of the. No, it's okay. something. I don't know why, but it changed mm. from time to time. Um, we were writing down a test with corridors, so I think I, I roll back the change while we were out. Yeah. So let me put it again. And with uh, Paul, I was saying that this this okay. one. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, on the other hand, I, I didn't roll back everything. I didn't roll back the introduction of Corridor yeah. uh, within the row. So now we have we have corridors, yeah. part of the row, so yeah. we are able to um, to take into account the new corridors in the row data structure in row class. Yeah. Uh, so are, are you well seated or? Yeah, yes, okay. I'm okay. Comfortable, you can see? Yeah. Um, uh, honestly, uh, I'm not very comfortable for the next step. Uh, maybe we change. Uh, well, uh, uh, we, we were, uh, just for the record, we were fixing the uh, test. Yeah. Since uh, that's, that's the goal. Paul Weiner sent, sent us uh, that's new. This yeah. is where we are. Yeah. So we introduced the, the concept of corridor within our code. Yeah. Now we have to exploit it. Yeah. Can that's you see the, the next move? Or yeah. Do you see the next move? Yeah, I, pre I prefer. Uh, I don't see the next move. <laughs> I, pre I, pre I prefer to change and tire. Ah, you're tired. Yeah. Uh, why don't. I'm pretty clear. I have a pretty clear idea of what we can do. Okay. Maybe you can switch. You, you be the driver. I'll be the navigator. Fine so I, yeah. I try to explain to you what. Okay. Uh, okay let's do that. You hold the mic. I can hold you the mic. Yeah. So. Yeah. So um, basically, what we need to do is is to uh, exploit the corridor stuff. Yeah. Uh, when it's time to extract uh, adjacent seed groups. Uh, I, I remember it was called. So find. I think it's uh, within the row that okay. find. Uh, find. Find something. Yeah, find best seats, maybe. Yeah. This one. Okay. So this one, you have a. Uh, so you, uh, you want to that that find range of available seats for yeah, category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one here. Yeah. Within the for each. Yeah, in the for each. This one. Before we wrote uh, here. Uh, here we are. Okay. So. And uh, the. It's within the find because it's the the find method that try to uh, get some seats yeah. and to identify the, if they are a group of adjacent seats or not. Ah, okay, okay, I see. Okay. So to extract them. Okay. Okay. So if you can see all codes, please. Yeah. Oops. Here we are. So this is the angle. <laughs> Maybe you we can rename range. Uh. I, and we, we make some tons of refactoring also, but yeah, you are actually right. It's uh, one group of adjacent seats, and the other ranges is uh, groups of adjacent seats. Uh, groups. You, you can take the first one yeah, and then rename yeah, groups. Yeah, groups. No, F2, F2, Control G, and you can change F2. No, no, the second one. Yeah. Second one. 
And then you uh, you change your name, groups. Uh, I rename, I rename. Okay. Groups. Okay. Groups. groups of adjacent sites. Uh, typo at the end, but oops. Okay. So this is the algorithm you see. Uh, we iterate on every seat that uh, we have been provided, and then we try to, if you look at the if yeah, condition one. here, yeah, yeah. maybe we can introduce a, 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 a name for, for that. It's, okay. uh, you see, uh, we are comparing the, seat, the current seat number with the previous with the one, one. Yeah. and if it's the following one, let's say uh, row two uh, and the following one is row three, that means that they are adjacent seats. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe you can introduce a method like here, uh, are adjacent seats. Yeah. Uh, OK. OK for you? Yeah, OK. Are adjacent seats. Adjacent. It's OK. Uh, make a mistake. E-N-G adjacent seats. Seats. OK. OK, let's do it. And what we needed to do uh, is to, uh, within that method, to also use the fact that I are there corridors or not? Ah, uh, yeah. That we, we haven't a corridor yet. No, no, but we will introduce it. But uh, you see, if the two numbers are the following one, yeah. and, but if you have a corridor in the middle, that yeah. means that you have to split into a new group. OK. So, so we have to pass a corridor. You have to pass a corridor. But that's, if you find the usage, the color is the row. OK. Here, so that means that you can spread the list of corridors positions yeah. here. Corridor. Corridors, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Alt enter, you can add the parameter, and then also you go can back in a, uh, go back into the implementation. Yeah. And corridor is there. Corridor, yeah, is there. You can uh, so you can scroll, please. Yeah, scroll. And within the adjacent, uh, adjacent seat, you, you, you pass it. I pass the, the list corridor. of corridors, okay. so that will, it will be uh, able to uh, exploit corridor. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll enter to introduce the parameter, yeah. and then within the implementation, okay. Here, so what we need to do is to add a new constraint, meaning that if we have a corridor in the middle, so we have a list of corridors, so corridors maybe dot contents or something like that. Okay. If the list of corridors contains the Content. seat the current position, okay. Uh, seat dot number, yeah. we should. Not uh, content. Not content. Not content yeah. Ah, yeah, not content. You're right. Not content. So we should. S okay, oh. cool. That means that if there is no corridor in the middle and they are following the index, they are adjacent seats. Uh, I think we, are, we fix the bug. Yeah, fix the bug. Okay. Uh, oh, maybe you can take a coffee now. Or refactor? Or coffee first. Coffee first, yeah. refactor after? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Your mic. Yeah. Oops. So, so, what did you just saw within that short scene? That will be the last. Any feedback about what just happened? Yeah. 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 That's Absolutely. basically what. So the the um, remark was when I had the solution, I switched the keyboard. I give the keyboard to Bruno because, uh, in my opinion, there, there is two. Uh, um, goals to, to that move. Have any ideas? Why would it be interesting for me, as soon as it's clear in my mind, to to give away the keyboard to Bruno? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's right. I must communicate to Bruno to in order to explain him what to do because he will be the driver. Yes, a short recap. Driver is the one with the keyboard. Navigator is the one aside. Explaining the direction, having a kind of, uh, uh, I used to do a lot of uh, paper to, it's like a call stack for what we are just achieving. Sometimes time we may uh, have a walk around and get back to the uh, original uh, intent, try to achieve baby steps. But there is one guy which is, uh, or lady, sorry, which is uh, able to aside, explain to the other where to, to go. So it's a good way when you are true that, uh, yes, first to explain clearly what I had in mind so that Bruno will be able to do it. And second is to avoid Bruno from being passive. Because think about it. If you have the keyboard and you have the ID, what will be the role of the other one? It will follow. It will Maybe check, I he checks his mail and check Twitter, but he 
Yeah, totally uh, disconnected. Yeah, absolutely. So to avoid passivity, to avoid Bruno from being passive, it's a, it's a nice way. Even if you switch every 20 minutes and you just get the keyboard and, and then you realize that you have a clear vision and, and you don't have, uh, spread, the, spread the keyboard. It's, a, it's a interesting stuff to do. Okay. Uh, I don't know how many times we have. Uh, the idea, uh, maybe we can... Uh, Highlight some 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 interesting stuff in, in our opinion for, uh, related to pair programming before we start discussing. First, it keeps our mental model aligned. So, as Jessica was talking about yesterday, we everyone has a mental his own mental model, uh, and pairing is a nice way to to confront and to to realize that the other uh, persons don't share the same vision of the world or, or, or the software. So, it's really interesting to to do so. Yeah, second one is a shortest feedback loop. Uh, when we do pair programming, we, we, we ask and we listen. It's a perpetual discussion with confirmation. It's, it's a way to be aligned. Uh. But also, it prevents you from having some kind of gated code reviews or blocking code reviews. Since you are, you are pairing, you don't need those. Uh, you can do code reviews after, afterwards, but you are not forced to, to have some yeah, gated code reviews. Uh, so you, it's it's increased, uh, and also when we do some feedback, it's the better moment because it's when it's less costly to change. If I just have an ID and a CD ID, changing uh, is is less expensive than if I code it and then two days or two, one afternoon after, my peers say no no, uh, we should we should change that, and uh, so it's a, a nice way. Also, it's enforce it's an opportunity to enforce the ubiquitous language. Within the first group, we were talking a lot about. Uh, did you, did you heard the domain expert talking about that? The range, uh, extract range. Uh, no, I never heard about it. So when you are alone, there are some terminology you are comfortable with. If you are working with another person, the other person will say, oh, I can't really understand what's yeah. behind that. That so it forces you to refine uh, and to to work around the. Yeah, the absolutely. And collective ownership? Uh, collective ownership is because when you practice in a team uh, programming, during your task, you still with the same person, but we change the task. We generally, we change. And at the end of the month, all, everybody knows Steve's and the code and the way to respect the style of the team. Finally, we, we create a team spirit. Yeah, we cover almost everyone covers the same codes uh, at the end of the of the week. Uh, some warnings, though. Uh, first, uh, yeah, some uh, uh, some association <laughs> may be demanding. Uh, I no. suppose <laughs> I suppose the second group uh, was a good illustration. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit caricatural, uh, but uh, usually when you have some pairing issue. What I, I discovered is mostly communication issues. These are not coding issues, really. These are most likely uh, communication issues. Yeah. And uh, I found some model interesting, like uh, I think it's ProcessCom uh, built from within the NASA to make people understand how they behave, how they communicate, and how the other were. So that you can target the proper channel for the other person to understand better your, your message. But uh, it might be very challenging. Depending on the profile, uh, I can pair all day long, uh, or I can be exhausted after yeah. one hour or two hours. Depend on, on the duo. Uh, yeah. But even in the worst uh, demanding case, uh, with some tools like ProcessCom, for instance, I had some, some ways to overcome and to, uh, and to drain less energy uh, than I should take if uh, I didn't see anything. And the last one, sustainable piece, uh, it's meaning if uh, you're very tired to pair with someone, slow down. It's yeah. not necessary to, to continue. Take a rest. Take, take a break and then, yeah. and then continue. It's interesting to take some, uh, some uh, to have a break and to have a big picture uh, sometime. Uh, some tips, uh, you have to secure your workspace layout. That seems completely obvious. But how many pair I've seen uh, with one person just in front of the keyboard, the, the, the screen, and the other one, like uh, uh, the, the legs just behind, uh, in front of the, uh, of, of the table. Uh, it, so 
Just starting by asking the other, are you comfortable? Can you see the code? Is it OK? Yeah. Seems obvious, but uh, sh yeah, it's, it's brings uh, a lot. The second one is if you have an ID, pass a keyboard. It's a, it's a good rule. What we achieved in, in, in the last group. Yeah. And last but not least, I think we, you must see communication as a protocol. Meaning that if I say something to Bruno, it is my responsibility to check that Bruno will grasp what I just said. Like uh, acknowledgement in, in, in TCP or whatever, I, I need to, to, to have it. And uh, it is my responsibility as a message sender, as, as the one that communicates to, to the other. This is not a fire and forget, one way uh, stuff communication. It's really a, a protocol. Yeah. Uh, so if you take that into account, you will reduce lots of implicit, lots of conflicts uh, that start with uh, those kind of uh, misunderstandings. And at the end, no, no, uh, yeah, Bruno? Go ahead. OK. Yeah. Uh, prerequisites, in our opinion, is? Uh, empathy. Empathy is a way to think and about uh, the other one and uh, consider him uh, as a partner. Mm -hmm to put in other shoes, yeah. to put it differently. Uh, benevolence, uh, when we try to find some terminology, uh, I, I, I may have said silly words or silly proposal, propositions. If Bruno were mocking me right from the beginning, I would have been like an uh, oyster <laughs> uh, and, and, and being mm, passive. Or maybe I will have a, uh, aggressive uh, behavior, in, in, but so benevolence is really key. So uh, yeah, it's it's for me the, the key for, for. And the last one is team player. Team player is meaning uh, if you have some rule and finally the team use another rule, accept the rule of the team. Uh, it's, it's it's important. So uh, do you have any questions? Because we have, uh, yeah, and we have a book to make. We, we were supposed to, to ask, uh, uh, go ahead on Twitter, and, and uh, one referee will design. So we don't have that kind of setup. So uh, depending on your questions, you may have a book, the book. <laughs> so we, we didn't realize that. Uh, so do you have questions? Yeah? Um, so one of the challenging times that I've had pairing is pairing with someone with significantly different skill levels. Um, do you have any suggestions about how to make that better? Yeah. Uh, what was the problem? Um, I mean, it's, it's a communication problem where uh, the levels of abstraction that, they, that the two people want to talk at are different. Uh, so when I've been the junior, it's I don't understand what they're saying, and when I'm mm. the senior, it's I have to say this in the longest possible way. Okay, there are several uh, answers about that. The first one may be use mob programming. Mob programming is very powerful when you have several junior to communicate and to respect them and to see what they do and the difficulties they have. In other words, you will increase the bandwidth <laughs> uh, to explain basic stuff to uh, newcomers or, uh, in, in, uh, once in a row uh, instead of explaining to every one of them. But that's basically what you, you are just saying. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe uh, if you don't do more programming, uh, you, are, you, you should be very, very quite a, a lot of empathy because you have to think how you were at your beginning of your career. And it's, it's very important <laughs> to consider the, the, the new guy this, the, uh, with uh, um, a lot of empathy. Yeah, it's a lot of empathy. So it may take time, but yeah. every time I pair, I learn new stuff, basically. Even if I pair with a junior uh, person or stuff like that, uh, whether uh, IDE shortcut or a way of considering a problem, a way of analyzing something. Uh, but if you are in a position with a very young people, you have, it's like a mentorship. But uh, yes, the, the ability to, to speak while you are um, uh, as a navigator, the ability to speak clearly, it's a, it's a challenge. But it's something that if you leverage on it, you can use it after with domain experts, with non-technical guys. Uh, non-technical people, so it's, I see it like uh, as a practice. 
uh, to be uh, most clear as possible. Uh, it will uh, help me for other situations, either for my, uh, with my, my wife, my children, my um, domain experts, uh, uh, stuff like that. So it's, I see that uh, like an opportunity to improve myself. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have a, yeah, other questions? Hello, my name is Irene. I'm from Detroit. Hello. Um, so I've, I don't do a lot of pair programming, but I work with um, like multiple developers in my team, right? And I feel all these scenarios d do apply there as well, um, where you have a change in requirement and one person is an introvert and one is an extrovert, where you need that quiet time to think through the requirements and analyze the situation. Um, so do you have um, tips for that when you have two people, maybe skill level is different. Yeah. Um, they might not be sitting next to each other, but all these does fall um, or affect uh, our way of working with each other. So meaning, what sh can we do before starting to code in order to better grasp the, the problem uh, or what? Uh, both ways, actually. Uh, um, both ways, separate uh, distributed teams? Yes. No, no, it's actually one team, oh, yeah? but two developers. My code would be the input to his uh, piece of story. Or uh, we are working on the same code base, basically. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying two different people in two different contexts, meaning mm -hmm. two different apps or APIs or stuff like that? Right, right. That need to synchronize? Right. Um, it's Usually, it's complicated. Uh, it depends on the politics of the of the company. How uh, people are incentive are the incentive to collaborate a lot or or not. Okay. Uh, but uh, I used to pair with other teams uh, with other teams. We used to switch. Uh, I, I previously worked in a big uh, bank, uh, and we were doing some switch uh, from time to time. When the interactions challenge was. Uh, uh, something like we, we felt we feel that it was uh, really demanding. So in that case, we wanted to reduce the uh, the, the cost of uh, mental model alignment. Uh, so we used to uh, we used to pair or to mob in some cases. Uh, otherwise, you can try to talk about the the interactions between those two contexts, maybe to have con like a contract based, uh, but to iterate and to refine it. Uh, because uh, it's a journey. Uh, at the start, you think that you must integrate the other system like this, but everything changes, so it's... I, I don't have a particular tips on that, sorry. No worries. Thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. We'll go to the last question up here. Yeah. Do you find that using uh, techniques like TDD are almost essential for this type of pair programming because it helps you communicate about the goals and express that in code? Uh, it's I, not necessary I, to practice TDD. It's better because uh, PDD, TDD is like uh, a protocol also. It's not a protocol, but it's also a protocol when we practice uh, pair programming. Um, I, I, I think we can't do pair programming without TDD, but it's better to use TDD, yeah, absolutely. But actually, we are biased because we always <laughs> TDD, so almost always. Uh, in some very POC case or stuff like that, no, not really a rare scenario. It's, it's a way to have a communi communication between two programmers, right? And uh, especially to better grasp the behavior we are expected. And, and, uh, and I'm really an outside-in guy, meaning I practice TDD, but considering the system as a black box and doing s some acceptance tests for that black box, uh, so it's helped me to focus on the uh, external behavior first. Uh, so it may help me a lot to, to achieve that journey. But uh, I think that communicating more and aligning more our mental model uh, is, uh, is, uh, is something that will increase the, the, uh, the team efficiency, even if you are not doing TDD. Yeah, I, I observe in reality uh, pair programming in a, in a team of Eight, per eight programmer. After several months, the capabilities of each one was awesome to understand the business and to propose something to the business because they understand perfectly, they discuss a lot, and they are engaged about uh, the business. 
because they discuss uh, the mon mental models are aligned with the business. I'm, I'm kind of, where we are, we are ending, I'm kind of, uh, since we didn't set the rules for the, the book, uh, let us figure it out uh, through Twitter or through the, the feedback wall and then try to find out uh, who will be uh, the winner. So, sorry, we were supposed to, to make a, a contest on Twitter, but uh, we made that. Time f for us to thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank you. Let's give our speakers a hand. Yeah, thank you.